Today I'm going to review PNC's virtual wallet. PNC's virtual wallet is basically a hybrid product. It's a, a checking and savings account sort of in one. So if you go under products and services under virtual wallet, you'll find it. And I don't believe this is available to everyone. I happen to live in an area where PNC doesn't have any branches and so I was able to get this product and there's a nice bonus when you sign up with this one that's why I did it earn up to $400 when you set up a virtual wallet 2600 locations low cash mode gives you more control when your balance is low I tried signing up with the virtual wallet with performance select and unfortunately that wasn't this one wasn't available in my area so they actually gave me this one you get $200 with $2,000 of direct deposits. The Performance Select will give you $400 when you have a direct deposit of $5,000 or more. So I clicked on this one. The one that gives you $400 is $25 monthly service charge or $0 with $5,000 plus in direct deposits. Once you click apply, it'll let you know which ones are available in your area. This is the web interface. It looks fairly dated as you can see. Every time I go to log in, it has to actually call up my phone. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm using a Google Voice number or if it would send me a text number each time, but every single time that I go to log in, I have to do this, so it's quite annoying. Okay, now it will ask for a passcode, so it's actually gonna call and ask for a passcode. I think if I had a compatible number, it would send a text message. After I enter the passcode and I log in, this is what you see. As you can see, the, the interface is very, this looks like something that you would see 15 or 20 years ago, so pretty out of date. What you see under virtual wallet accounts, the option that I have is a spend account, a reserve account, and a growth account. Now the spend account is for everyday spending. This is basically the checking account. There's no limits on this. There's no six item limit. This one doesn't pay any interest. There's no interest rate on, this one pays no interest. The reserve account is for short-term planning. This one pays no interest rate. And the only one that pays the interest rate is the growth. This is the long-term savings. And this one pays 4.65% APY. But unfortunately, this one has a six item limit per month. If you go over the six item limit, it's $3 each time. Okay, so now I'm, I'm looking at the virtual wallet. So PNC has several different versions of the virtual wallet. And it can be quite confusing if you don't pay attention. So the one on their website, the default website, before you put in your zip code or anything, you have the virtual wallet, virtual wallet with performance spend, virtual wallet with performance select. Now all of these have a monthly service charge if the direct deposit's not met. So the cheapest one is $7 monthly service charge with 500 in direct deposit. The next one is $15 monthly service with or $0 with $2,000 in direct deposit. And the last one is $25 monthly service charge or $0 with $5,000 direct deposit. Now the one that I have is none of these. I The one that I signed up with, when I put in this and I put in my zip code, it gave me one option that was available and it wasn't any of these, but they still gave me uh, $200 that I could earn. The one that I signed up with that was the only one available for me was the Virtual Wallet Checking Pro by PNC Bank. This is the PNC Virtual Wallet Checking Pro. This is a completely different product and it's better in a lot of ways, I think. The main reason it's better is there's no monthly minimum, there's no monthly service charge. If you look at the spend account, that's the checking account, the one that has no interest. The other ones require that you keep basically a $2,000 average balance in a zero interest account in order to get uh, the bonus. This one has zero, so I can, I can do the direct deposit, take the money out, and uh, I'll be able to get the bonus and not have to maintain a high balance. That's why I like this one. You look at a zero, 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 there's no fees for this one. The only fee that I could see that would really affect me possibly if I did a lot of transfers is the, there's no paper statement fee because all of this is online. That's the thing, all online, there's no paper. Even if you sign up for paper statements, it's gonna be online. But under other fee, there's a transaction limit on the savings portion of the account. There's a transaction limit fee. If you go over six in one month, it's $3 each time you go over. And it does look like they're enforcing that. So that's one thing I, d I definitely don't like that. I mean, my Wealthfront cash account doesn't have anything like that. 
Marcus doesn't have anything like that. And Raisin doesn't have anything like that either. So basically, the growth is the only one that pays the high 4.65% APY. It's high by retail bank standards when you compare it to Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. However, since there's no branches near me, this is competing against all the other accounts like Marcus, uh, Wealthfront Cash Account, all sorts of high, high APY ones. And if you want to do a bank only option, the Laurel Road checking account by KeyBank pays 5% APY and there's no monthly fees or minimum. So I think right now the Laurel Road has a better web interface. It's more modern and you get a 5% APY. So I definitely like the web interface and the rate better on the Laurel Road by KeyBank and it's an FDIC insured it's owned by the bank. It's not a fintech. What do I like about PNC's online interface? The one thing that I like about PNC Bank, this website is so old that if you want to set up an account, you don't have to go through Plaid or one of those third-party services. They actually let you do the routing number and account number, and that's refreshing because I've been so annoyed with Plaid not working with Wealthfront and linking account issues. I would rather just do it manually. I just think it's more reliable. And I, I don't like giving out my password to third parties. And it's actually against the terms and conditions for a lot of bank accounts to actually use Plaid and yet they're they're linking it to Plaid. If you actually read through the terms and conditions through a lot, a lot of bank account agreements, to actually give out your password and username to a third party is against their terms and conditions. You're supposed to protect it. Yet the same companies will link to third party services such as Plaid. So it's kind of a contradiction. Okay, they do have a bill pay. You can actually set up bill. So it's got quite a few features. You can do manage our bills, payment activity, alerts. You can set up quite a few different alerts. For overdraft, you could have an email sent or a text. Now when I go to my offers, I don't see anything here. Um, since I'm out of their service area, I'm not allowed to sign up with any of their credit cards from what I understand. And I've actually been denied with the PNC credit card. And I think that's because I'm outside of their geographic area. So once you click on the account, you get more of a modern interface. Now you can see that you have the reserve, growth, now growth is basically the savings portion. This is the 4.65% APY. The reserve is for the reserve is supposed to be like a piggy bank like for savings for uh, something like a trip, like if you're planning for a big trip or something or emergencies, you want to have a little bit of money left over. This whole three tier system to me just is confusing. I I don't like it, but I guess for some people, maybe they would like this. I would rather have one account and simplify things and not have to worry about the six item limit also. What else can you do here? You can set up a bill reminder. Now, I don't know how useful this is. You could actually, on iOS or Android, you could actually set up a notification. So I don't know how useful this is today. Here you can see uh, spending history. You can set up a savings rule. You can add a new rule, type of rule. Uh, how much do you want to save? You could put $500, let's say. Um, you can add these rules. This interface is a little bit nicer than the, the rest of it, but I think this interface needs an overhaul. It just looks very dated. If you look, actually looking at the logo on my screen, it looks pixelated. The, the logo looks blurry. This kind of looks fuzzy. The, the menu items look dated. It would be nice if I didn't have to receive a phone call every time I want to log in through the web interface. It would be nice if it just remembered my login. Okay, now I wasn't able to capture the mobile interface due to security restrictions, but I do have some screenshots here. And the good thing about PNC Mobile is it's a better interface than the mobile app interface is better than the web interface. So if you look here at the screenshot, you can see that it's a more modern interface. You've got more, more of the modern interface versus the older part. It's pretty well laid out and there's quite a few features. Uh, it also has the calendar and it has the budgeting thing, which I, I, I do sort of like the budgeting. You've got Zelle uh, and then you can link your credit cards also. There's the uh, deposit thing. So anyways, that's my review of PNC's virtual wallet. Do you have PNC virtual wallet? Feel free to comment below. Also feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you.